An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Let's pray. Almighty and everlasting Lord, once again, we thank you and praise you for the great privilege that you've given us to celebrate your worth. Father God, we thank you and praise you for sending your only begotten Son into thy world and redeeming us from the, all the clutches of the sin. We thank you for the new hope and new salvation that you've given us. At this time, we pray for all those who are going through different kind of struggles, pain, especially the world is facing COVID-19. Father God, we pray for all those who are suffering due to this pandemic. Continue to be with your people and enable them to overcome all the struggles and the pains in their life. Father God, we thank you for this morning. Has Help us to worship you in our respective places. We pray for all those who are leading this worship, continue to show your abundance of grace upon them. We thank you for the servant who sharing the word of God. Lord, fill him with your word and enable us to understand your word and help us to impart that in our daily life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Greetings to you all. Christmas is a time of joy. St. Luke chapter 2 verse 14 says, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. The message of Christmas is God identification with the humanity and redemption of humankind and the creation. God became human and lived among us. In our ordinary struggles, let us remember that in all walks of life, God enters with the tiding of great joy, enabling us to understand that still there is hope for the humankind. For the hopeless world, 
Christ is giving a new hope that Emmanuel, God, is with us. Christmas will become meaningful only when we accept our Lord and Savior in our life. St. John chapter 316 reminding us that for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Christmas is a time we give thanks to God for the great gift of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ who was able to reconcile us with God, healing us to come closer to God to experience his great love. We live in the world of uncertainty where the life is taken away. Humanity is in fear and the world is facing great crisis due to COVID-19 pandemic. Number of suicidal cases are increasing in our land. Depression, loneliness, divorce, unemployment, so on. This is a result of despair. The stress and the disappointment that they carry in their life. Christmas is enabling us to understand that in all these human obstacles there are solution in God which he revealed through Jesus Christ. Christ give us new life and new hope. Christmas is reminding us that God is not far away. He is still with us in our struggles, sorrows, hopelessness. May this Christmas bring new hope and joy to each one of us. On behalf of Crossway Marthoma Church and my family, wishing you all happy Christmas. It is my great pleasure to welcome Reverend Christopher Feldania. Ajahn is one among us. His home parish is Farmers Branch Marthoma Church. Ajahn is currently serving as Midwest Youth Chaplain and currently a member of our Diocesan Council. I am happy to welcome Achin into our service. Achin will share from the Word of God today. Thank you Achin for your valuable time and presence. May God Almighty continue to strengthen your ministry. Thank you. God bless us. Respected Achin and beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, greetings to all of you in the name of the Triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It is indeed a great honor and privilege to be here with all of you as a part of this service. So let me thank each and every one of you, and especially your Vigar Sonoachin, for extending this kind invitation to me to be here with all of you and to share the Word of God. For those of you who may not know me, my name is Reverend Christopher Phil Daniel. I'm a native of Dallas, having grown up in the Farmers Branch Church. And right now, I'm serving in the Midwest region of the Diocese of North America and Europe as uh, the youth chaplain, as well as serving as a vigar of Bethel Marthama Church in Frankfurt. I'm the vigar of the Kansas Marthama Church, the vigar of the St. John's Marthama Church in Michigan, and also the vigar of the Marthama Congregation in Minneapolis. As we come together on this day to celebrate the birth of our Lord, let us thank God for the greatest gift that we as God's children have ever received, and that is the gift of Jesus Christ himself. For our meditation this day, let me read from the Gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 and 11. Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 and 11. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem. Verse 11, On entering the house they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid homage to him. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this wonderful privilege to come together for worship. We thank you for this Christmas season and for being the reason that we have this season to celebrate. Father God, we pray that you would continue to impart to us your love, your grace, your mercy, your joy, and your peace. And we pray that as we celebrate your birth, we would do so in a meaningful way, 
We pray that your love and your presence would continue to change and transform our lives. And we pray that, Lord God, you would continue to change and transform the face of, of this world, Lord, so that many people who are suffering can experience, Lord, your healing and your comfort. Father God, we, as we come together before your word, speak to us, Lord, and continue to strengthen and sanctify us. Lead us by the power of your spirit and enable us, Lord, to live for your glory both now and always. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. So many songs during the season of Christmas remind us that Christmas is to be a time where we are to rejoice and to be happy. Songs like Joy to the World and It's the Most Wonderful Time of the Year all communicate this idea that Christmas is to be a joy, joyous, cheerful, blissful, and trouble-free season. But honestly, we have to ask ourselves, is this what we are actually experiencing at Christmas time? Are we experiencing the true joy of Christmas? Especially when we are living in these very unprecedented and challenging times, we have to ask ourselves, are we able to rejoice? We might even feel guilty uh, for rejoicing when the world is crying out in pain, but we have to realize that God intends that we experience joy, especially during this time of year when we come to celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. There are many things that keep us from experiencing joy. It might be our present circumstances. It might be the situation that the world is facing. It might be personal problems that we're dealing with. It could be our health. It could be our family life. It could be our work situation. It could be so many different things. Many factors definitely affect the amount of joy or happiness that we're able to experience during this time of year. Some people get so busy during this holiday season that they even forget the reason for this particular season. They get caught up in all of the uh, materialistic things that this season also brings with it. And because of that, they're not able to celebrate in the way that God intends. Some of us might not have anything really to be worried about, but for some reason, we're not able to experience joy, not only at Christmas, but maybe even throughout our everyday lives. Oftentimes, there is this disillusionment that is associated with Christmas because we get so hyped up with so many different expectations. And when uh, our situations and circumstances and even our celebrations don't live up to those expectations, we might feel disappointed and despaired. But what can we do to avoid this kind of disillusionment? What can we do to improve our level of joy during this Christmas season, especially when the world is going through a global pandemic? And I think we can find an answer to this question that has been posed in the, in the gospel portion, uh, which I read from Matthew chapter 2. In this portion, we read about the Magi or the wise men from the east who saw a star in the sky that indicated the birth of a new king in Israel. And, ha and having the desire to go and honor this king with gifts, these wise men or magi, they set out on a journey following this star to find this newborn king. And it's from this journey, from the attitudes of, of these wise men, from their experiences, from the events that surround their journey, that we are able to understand how we, as believers, can raise our level of joy at Christmas. So I wanted to share just a few points with all of you this day. First of all, we should understand that our level of joy at Christmas is directly related to what it is we seek. Our level of joy is directly related to what we seek, especially at Christmas time. What is it that we want to get out of Christmas? What is it that would make our Christmas wonderful and satisfying? Would it be snow, having a white Christmas? I know many of you, uh, again, living in, in Texas in the Dallas area, would want to have a white Christmas for, for once in your lifetime. But after having been in Chicago for almost the past five years, you know, a white Christmas is not something that we desire here. But for some, that, that might be their desire. Or it might be the ability to come together as family and friends. It might be about giving the perfect gifts or the right presents to the right people. All of these things we associate with, you know, bringing joy to us uh, during this particular time of the year. But the problem with all of this is that these things 
can leave us disappointed because we are placing our expectations in the wrong places and in the wrong things. The Magi show us how to increase our level of joy at Christmas by the way they look for the right thing. And what is it that they are looking for? Verse 2 in Matthew chapter 2 tells us that they came to Jerusalem to see the child who was born the king of the Jews. They not only came to see Jesus, but they also came to pay homage and to worship him. This is what we also need to be looking for and experiencing this Christmas, an experience of true worship, a renewed encounter with he who was born as the true king of this world. If our goal this Christmas is to worship Jesus Christ, then we will not be dissatisfied or disappointed with our experience during this Christmas season. We must have the desire to truly worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Secondly, our level of joy at Christmas is directly related to where we look. Where we look. We learn from the Magi that there are wrong and right places to look for Christ or to look for Christmas per se. The Magi, they start out by looking in the wrong place. They first looked where their own human understanding and reasoning uh, would have led them. That is why the Magi went to where they thought the king should be born, to the palace of Herod the Great in the capital city of Jerusalem. But it was only after following the star that the Magi realized that the one who was born king of the Jews was born in a more modest and humble setting. So we too are tempted to look for joy at Christmas in the wrong places. We think by getting or giving the right gift we'll be satisfied. We imagine that being with a lot of people will bring us joy. We might even believe that attending many gatherings might make us feel happy. But all of these things can easily disappoint and discourage us. We may not be able to find uh, the right gift or even afford the right gift for a loved one. People near and dear to us may be missing from our holiday celebrations, and no amount of revelry can ever fill any of the voids in our lives. If we are looking to these things, especially the things of this world for joy, we may be left with the feeling of disillusionment. The Magi then were able to look in the right place when they looked to God. The trip to Jerusalem was not a total loss or a total waste. While there, they probably discovered where they should have looked in the first place, the scripture. The scribes in Jerusalem would have informed that according to the prophet Micah, the, the Messiah was to be born in Bethlehem, not in Jerusalem. And with this new information, they looked again to the star in the sky and followed it to Bethlehem until it stood over the place where Jesus had been laid. And thus, by looking to God and looking to his word, they were able to experience the true presence of Christ and the presence of, the, of Christ brought them true joy. And then finally, our level of joy at Christmas, I think, is also directly related to what we give. The Magi came to Jesus' house bearing gifts. The gifts they gave were entirely appropriate for the person that they had come to see. And I think we all know the significance of the gifts that they gave. First, they gave a gift of gold, a gift fit for a king. By giving it, they acknowledged that Jesus was and is the one true king. Secondly, they gave frankincense, a gift for a priest. This was representative of the incense that the priests would use in the temple. And by giving it, the Magi were acknowledging that Jesus was a priest, not just any priest, but the one high priest who would reconcile us to God, who would make sacrifices on our behalf to bring redemption for this world, to bring us atonement. And finally, the Magi gave myrrh as well, a gift that was fit for a healer. We might know that myrrh is a fragrant ointment or balm that has medicinal properties. And by giving this gift to Jesus, they acknowledged that he had come into this world as the one true healer and redeemer and savior of this world who would overcome the powers of darkness, evil, 
and death. So this Christmas season, we should also practice giving appropriate gifts, just as the Magi did. Giving material gifts should not uh, take prominence in giving the gifts that are actually needed to bring about healing in the lives of other people. Thus, we should give the gift of our love and our kindness to our friends and to our family. We should give the gift of our help to those who are hurting. We should give the gift of forgiveness to those who might have hurt us. Giving these kinds of gifts will result in a joyous and meaningful Christmas. So what are we going to give for Christmas this year? Why not consider giving yourself to God? Give your time to God. Give your time to your family. Give your compassion to those who are hurting. Give your forgiveness to those who may be isolated. Give your hearts to Jesus. Remember that when we look for the right thing, when we look in the right places, when we give the right gifts, we will surely have joy at Christmas and always. And I conclude our meditation this day by telling a short story. So a man once sent his parents a gift, and that gift was a microwave oven. And this was, of course, the gift that he had chosen to give them for Christmas. And he recalls the experience of giving this particular gift. His parents were very much excited to receive this new microwave so, they, so that they could be a part of uh, this new technology that was being made available. So you can imagine that this story is taking uh, place or had taken place several years back. So when the father unpacked the microwave and plugged it in, literally within seconds, what were once smiles on the faces of this father and mother turned into two frowns. Uh, even after having uh, to read the directions or the instruction manual, they could not uh, figure out how to use this particular microwave. They couldn't make it work no matter how much effort they put into it and no, how, no, no matter how much reading uh, they put into it. So two days later, uh, this man's mother told her friend about her inability to get the microwave oven even uh, to heat up uh, a glass of water. She said, I can't get this thing to work. I really don't need better directions or a better instruction manual. I just need my son to come along with this gift. So we have to remember when God gave the gift of salvation, he didn't just send a booklet of complicated instructions for us to figure out. He sent his one and only son. He sent himself to dwell among us, to give his life for our sake, to give us the greatest gift of all, that is the gift of salvation. And through the gift of salvation, we are able to experience true and eternal joy. And that is what we should be celebrating this Christmas season. We should be looking in the right places. We should be seeking the right things. We should be giving the right gifts so that our joy can increase and so that we can continue to have a positive impact on this world as a faith community. I thank and praise God for your church in Dallas. I praise God for the wonderful ministry that you as a worshiping community are taking part in. May God continue to strengthen you and enable you to be a light in that part of the United States, in that part of Texas, in Dallas. May God help you to shine the light of Christ to those who may be in darkness. So may the joyous blessings of Christmas be with all of you. May God be with all of you in the new year. And may God continue to guide you with much strength and enthusiasm and energy as you continue to take part in the ministry and mission of Jesus Christ. Once again, let me wish each and every one of you a very Merry Christmas and a very happy and blessed New Year. Please join me in the following prayer. O Lord, the sight of the guiding star brought hope, courage, and joy to those who had journeyed to find you. When our journey seems long, when hope seems far away, when our courage is failing, fill us with faith. Shine your light on our fears, and lift our hearts with your joy. Amen. Dearly beloved in Christ, we are now in the season of Christmas, participating in the celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ. This is a time when we face uncertainty in our life. Humanity is in fear 
and the social fabric is disrupted due to the crisis of a pandemic. We may ask what Christmas means at this unforeseen time. Of course, the words of Prophet Isaiah gives us some comfort, especially to face such crisis in our life. But it says the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them the light has shined. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 2 speaks about the light that is coming to the world and giving newness in the life and removing darkness from among us. Jesus, the light to the world, shines in everyone. The birth of Christ removes the darkness, the life of human beings. The Gospel according to St. John about the coming of Jesus Christ, it has been mentioned, the true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. Of course, the wise men from the East, seeing the star at the rising, they followed the star and they reached Bethlehem and they have seen the true light, Jesus, the child in the manger. When they saw the child, they were overwhelmed with joy. And this is the realization that the Son of God is born and He is with us. Christmas also brings new hope in a world of pain and death. The event of Christmas allow us to lift our hearts in hope, seeing the light at the end of the tunnel is a hope that everyone aspires today. Of course, in the midst of despair, the distribution of vaccine as a remedy to the coronavirus brings hope to the world. At this Christmas, we find new hope God's intervention in the life of the people, again the assurance that I will I'll be with you. And God's presence gives new hope. The child in the manger, in its vulnerability, is an image of fragile hope. When people who are vulnerable, who are rejected, who are at the margins, who are in despair. Jesus, the Son of God, brings fragile hope to everyone. Yes, in the world of chaos and confusion and anxiety and grief, Jesus gives radiance of light and a rays of hope in order to have joy and peace. Let this Christmas be a time to remember that God is with us at every moment of our life. Do not be afraid, for to us a child is born. Let the birth of Jesus bring new light, new hope, and the joy of salvation to all of us. Wish all the best and a happy Christmas and a blessed New Year to everyone. Let God's presence be with us 
at all times. May God bless us.